Old books have been used for many artistic creations over the years. They've been altered with paintings and drawings, turned into sculpture with cuts and folds, and bound and stacked together to make furniture. Well, here's a new idea that pairs books with fiber art to make amazing dimensional creations of paper and string. It gives an entirely new meaning to the phrase book binding. Now I'm going to lead you through a couple of techniques that can prepare a book for some simple weaving. Now on a hand loom, the long fibers that run the length of the loom are called the warp. And the thread that travels back and forth across the width to create the color and patterns is called the weft. I'm going to be referring to those terms in this demonstration. The warp is going to need to be strung first. This is what I call a page loom. The weaving will lie flat against a page. I think this works best with hardcover books, but you can also use a paperback if you can get it to open up enough and lie flat. So to start, take a ruler and across the top of the page, create a dot about every half inch to quarter inch. Next, you're going to pick up a few pages and with a strong hand punch, go over each dot with a punch and create a hole. Now if you're having trouble doing this, you're probably trying to punch too many pages at a time, so use less pages. Now then, you can go back and you can pick up just a few more pages. Put your punch back over that hole and punch through some more like this. Then you're going to repeat that on the opposite side of the book. Now you don't need to do all of the pages. In fact, with heavy book pages like this, you may only need to punch 12 to 15 pages. Okay, now it's time to make the warp. I've already created most of the warp along this book. And I have a very long piece of string that I've tied off over in this corner to finish it up. Now I'm just going to go back alongside from underneath and to the opposite hole on this side. I'm going to pull it taut, but not so taut that it's going to bend the pages. Then move underneath to the next one. Now once the warp is strung, you're ready to start weaving. You can use colorful hemp, twine, yarn, jute, just any fibers you'd like. Here's an example of how it might look with both pages finished. The next idea I'd like to share with you is creating a book loom that's more like a heddle loom. Now a true heddle loom has a rigid section in the middle that allows you to change the position of the warp as you weave. This one is going to stay put. However, it does create a much more three-dimensional book loom and it allows passage underneath the warp strings. So to start with, get an old book. This could be a paperback or a hardcover. And if you just kind of divide it in half, I'm going to put some of the pages down here on this side and some of the pages on that side and put it down like this. So I've got some pages up in the middle. Now to get these pages to stand up straight, I'm going to just take a few at a time and I'm going to bend them back in towards the spine and then come over to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. Then back to the right side, bend them, give it a good crease the best you can. All right, so this is what it would end up looking like. Now you notice that I've used some clips to hold down the pages and that's going to help them from getting in my way. You're also going to need to punch holes as we did with the first technique, you know, about a, a half inch to a quarter inch apart. This time you're doing it on the long side of the book and you're also doing it up here in the middle section. So to create the warp, I have my long piece of string again tied onto the corner. You might want to leave a little extra string hanging off just in case it needs to be tightened later. Now take the warp through the corresponding hole, first of all here in the middle. Notice I'm pulling it taut but not too tight. I'm going to loop it around, just kind of secure it there in the middle. 
like so. And then down over on this side through the corresponding hole and loop it around again. Okay, this time I'm going to take the warp around to the back side, tuck it under the back side of the book. This is going to help keep it tight, create a little bit of tension that's going to hold it more secure. Then I'll move on to the next hole. All right, you'll end up with a book that looks a lot like this. Now the loom is ready for weaving, or you could create some macrame loops on it as well. Use any fibers you'd like. Along with creating a book loom, you can take the rest of the pages that are left over and create more of a sculptural piece. They can be rolled, folded, stitched, bound. There's so many ways to alter it, like this example that I have up over here. Now, a finished book loom could be displayed on an easel, hung on the wall, and depending on the design, you could just leave it sitting on the tabletop to view it as well. You can find old books at your local library, of course, or pick them up at yard sales or thrift stores. But if you have some of those old storybooks or textbooks or encyclopedias laying around that you just can't throw away, this might be a great idea to repurpose them. Now, there's a printable version of this idea on our website with more photos and suggestions for the materials you might use to make a book loom. Visit dickblick.com and get inspired.